Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob, Boston edition. We are presented and hosted by Highlands, Stop Your Cramp, Not Your Race, and by Polar, Chase Your Destiny with us. The New York City Marathon champion, the silver medalist from the 2004 Olympics in Athens, and of course, he won the greatest marathon, in my opinion, in the history of mankind, 2014 Boston Marathon, Mr. Meb Kofleski. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, How you Bob. doing, bud? Doing really well. Thanks for having me. You know what? I love the transition that you've done all this marathon stuff, and then we just saw you in Kona, Hawaii, and you're about to announce that you're doing the Ironman World Championship in October. <laughs> I guess if you're in Hawaii, you know, you got to think about it at least. Oh, that's not a no. I like that. <laughs> so, Mab, 2013, you were in the grandstand, and what do you, what do you remember about that? Well, I mean, it was a beautiful day, you know, to be able to watch my fellow runners come across the finish line because I didn't get these opportunities to do that when I have press conferences or drug testing. But that day, I'm like, how he gave me a stand uh, past the grandstand, kind of watching. Beautiful day, people holding hands, come to the finish line, just a glorious day. And then the catastrophic stroke. I was there for four and a half hours, four hours or so, and then I missed it by five minutes of bombing, obviously. The bombing devastated all of us and, yes. you know, put a hurt in all our heart and took lives away and limbs and people still trying to recover from it. But, uh, you know, in 2014, I said I wanted to change that to something positive and, uh, you know, as an athlete, you can work hard, but there's no guarantee. But right. when your heart is in the right place and you do good things and uh, it all, the chips all fell in, my, in, in the right places for me. You've got the names of the four people who lost their lives on your race number that day. And you, you broke away early, <laughs> right? You, you basically, and, and, and did you learn that from a Bill Rogers book that, hey, why not get away? Well, no, I mean, I tell Bob Larson, my mentor, I said, I'm not going to be in the length of the last 5K. So I was not very confident in my training, but uh, I knew Boston was special for me for many years. It was right. the missing link of my resume to win. And basically I said, you know, Boston strong. You have the victim's name on your bib, Martin, Sean, Ling, and uh, Crystal. Yes. And then you draw inspiration, people cheering and cheering, and you just said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. If I get beat, I get beat. But I came to win. Top three, a personal best, and I was so delighted to do all three. So at that point, you're what, 37 years old, right? <laughs> 30, 30, 30, soon to be 39, two weeks out 39, 39. that's right. Yeah. 39, you're going to be 39 years old. If you look at your marathon PR compared to all the other guys in the field, it's, it's not even on the front page, right? <laughs> so a lot of guys in that field were probably like, when you made your move early, they're like, okay, Meb's getting some camera time. We don't, we don't have to worry about Meb. And at it, it, 13 miles, it was you and one just other runner. Just yeah, just fine. So running with him and then dropping him, then you're on your own. What were your thoughts as you're running through? It was a risky move that I did. You know, in the marathons, you didn't take a lot of risk, but you calculated the risk. And then, uh, you know, experience paid up in a big way because I knew that having done the Boston Marathon, I knew the hard challenging course are coming. And when Joseph Boyd was bumping to me a little bit, I noticed he's getting fatigued and tired. I said, I'm going to be by myself up the hills. I threw a 430 mile to get away from yes, him. Yes, you and, did. And people were so excited chanting USA, USA, going 18, 19 miles. I got excited. I started chanting USA, USA. <laughs> and I'm like, concentrate on the race, concentrate on the race. But, you know, the, the lead was so big that they tried to close on me. And unfortunately they, for them, they did. And fortunately for me, I became the first American in 31 years, on the oldest since 1931, to be able to pull the victory for all of us. 25K, you got a 51 second leader. Right? Okay. 30K, you got 121. 35K, 51 seconds. Then, you know, uh, miles uh, 22 to 24, 448, 446, 4, 4, 456, 447. Also, all of a sudden, here's Wilson Chibet, runs a 432. <laughs> He's 12 seconds back at, at mile 24. At 24, you're thinking, I mean, 12 seconds, could you see him at that point? Were you trying not to look back? So I saw him at mile 20, uh, 23, 23 uh, yeah. 5K left. I looked something to the right and I see an orange shirt. I don't have no idea who it was, right. I'm gonna go. But it, You so know it's a fast guy. It's a fast guy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, but then he comes to, do you want to maintain the gap or extend the gap or try to save your energy to be competitive at the end? And I'm glad I didn't do that one. I just tried to maintain, extend the gap and kept pushing, got down to five seconds, six seconds with a yeah. mile to go and, you know, coming home straight, the crowd carried me through and the angels from above. So you lost 44 seconds in the, over 5K, <laughs> right? Your lead is six seconds. And what's great about the finish of Boston is you take a turn and you're by your, they, a person can't see you at that point. So were you surging basically in those those blocks? 
you know, from mile 20, uh, 23rd and on, you got to take a quick pick and see yeah. if you're trying to maintain the gap, trying to extend the gap. But the only point was after about 1K to go, you're downhill, go overpass, and then yes. make a right right turn on Hereford. Then you think, okay, I got to sprint as, as hard as I can to make the gap look bigger. So mental psychology. Out of sight, to, out of mind. Absolutely. And then my, hopefully he will get discouraged once the gap is bigger. And then making a left on Boston, I just crossed myself. I said, thank you, God, for giving me this opportunity. I know it's not over, but it's getting close. But I know for a fact, 600 meter long. And that was the longest 600 meter in a way. <laughs> but because you're not sure if he's how, how he's charging. But at the same time, just grateful to be able to change something positive. The Boston Street from what it was. Catch moment in 2013. So... You've won a lot of races in your life, right? You win New York the year after, basically not knowing if your career is over, mm -hmm. right? You're the hip injury, and you come back and win the New York City Marathon in 2009. Here, the, the country's going through trauma. The world's going through trauma. You come back from that devastation of 2013 to win in 2014. Uh, how was this win different than any other win you've ever had? I mean, in life, we fa face challenges, but also, also always trying to overcome things. And right. We overcame uh, you know, my journey from Eritrea and poverty and making the United States. Eating and dirt. Eating dirt, you know, it's a survival. And then here in the U.S., we're going through overcoming obstacles, the tourist attack into the Boston Marathon. So that's what I was thinking. And, you know, to be able to build, pull the victory was huge. And it is the most meaningful victory in my career. And, uh, you know, I can't run for everybody, but I'm honored to be back here in Boston in 2018 to be able to represent Mar Martin Richard and his foundation, MR8. So how did that change your life, winning that race? Because, you know, it's not like you've got another 10 years in your career after that. You know, you think you win uh, Silver Medal, you win uh, New York, you got your life made, and uh, a, shoe, a shoe sponsor, which is the most essential thing in running, drops you. Drop you like a stone, right? Uh, so yeah. it hurts, it sucks in the heart, but at the same time, it's not what people say, you got to prove yourself, and don't, don't believe what you can do, because uh, money comes, money goes, motivation always stays. What's your inner motivation? And I look back how I started running when I was in P class, seventh grade, and I was lonely in Mammoth Lakes, and I'm like, bad things start going to your head. You know what? I would still run for free because I love running yes. and came back and make another Olympic team, win, uh, win in the Boston Marathon, win the trials, and to win the New York the Boston Marathon 2014, I mean, no, I think they could ever compare it because it's a, it's, an, it's a prestigious event and great event here, and the Bostonians know their sports. Yeah. And uh, this morning, the first person I ran into, Bill Rogers, and he says, hey, to welcome to retirement. The other person uh, who works <laughs> in construction is like, welcome back, champ. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So MR8 Foundation, what, what will you be doing? You, so you're, you're running. I'm running the marathon for What the heck? I thought you retired. <laughs> You're supposed to have little drinks with umbrellas in it. You're not supposed to be running a marathon. Yeah, I am supposed to. But when uh, I became a good friend of the family, They're amazing uh, family. Uh, Bill and Denise Richards, and uh, when Bill sent uh, an idea to, for me to run the, for the foundation before New York, I'm like, man, I'm not thinking even another marathon. I'm, I'm done with marathoning. <laughs> yeah, but, it's a long way. You know, when you think about it, you know, what he wrote, peace, don't, no more hurting people, always capture my... Intrigued by his sign, how wisdom he was, how intelligent he was, right. and I want to be able to represent him. So I am running for MR8. Uh, I will be running about 3 3 10 uh, pace. 3 and 10? I'm That's just no gonna, big deal. But I'm going to enjoy the view as well. So I'm glad to be wearing his jersey. I bet you you'll notice things running 310 you've never noticed before. Absolutely. It's going to be a lot of sticky ground and a lot of cups around and all the <laughs> things. So about 26.2. What's, what's ironic is you're here and we're in the Highlands booth and Highlands has all their teachers are running here. And you've got, you guys came over with nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Your family, your parents came here because of education, because they wanted a better lot in life for their children. Talk a little bit about teachers that made a difference in your life? Well, my parents uh, always say, t respect teachers. Respect teachers because teachers are like your parents. Yes. Because they make a di biggest difference in the world, especially in Eritrea. Teachers were this pedestal, you right. know. I was looking at the movie yesterday, Winston Churchill, The Darkest Hour. Yeah, when oh, when so somebody good. comes in, people rise. It's a sign of respect. And I wish teachers get all this respect because they are making difference in the world and it's not they don't do it for the money but they do it because they want to help the seed grow to the best fruit that can be people who've been who find out about your story after you win Boston don't realize how close your career came to being over after that hip injury after the you know the trials in 2000 for the 2008 Olympics and you were you ran the trials Ryan Che passed away during a race you go the next morning you're in your hotel room to watch the marathon go by, you had to crawl 
to the window to watch. Your hip yeah. was that bad. Absolutely. And how long were you dealing with that before you realized you could run again? Oh, I mean, it was uh, it was the total devastation in 2008. You know, you think you got silver medal in the Olympics in 2004. You're like, I want to get a gold or at least another medal. You're excited, but you know, you don't always get what you what you want. Right. You know, and it's a challenge. And then, you know, when Ryan Shea passed away, and mentally, physically, and emotionally, it kind of put life in perspective. So I wasn't too concerned about my running, but I wasn't sure if I could run ever again. And then, basically, it took me 10 weeks to diagnose what was wrong with me. Uh, ten for 10 weeks. weeks. 10 weeks. I think six weeks completely off, but. I was still kind of having issues. What was it? It was pelvic stretch fracture, and then my vitamin D was low, calcium, and I was too thin, too long, and uh, I wanted that for that win that I right. really badly wanted Gotta to win. Gotta get leaner. Gotta <laughs> get leaner, but it doesn't mean always the best thing. And so then, when did you have a race after that where you realized, okay, I can still be one of the best in the world? You know, I called a doctor at UCLA, and says, Dr. Natif, and she said, uh, you know, can I run again? And then it was Dr. Lewis Meharan from New York that diagnosed yes. the issue. But uh, when I came back, won the trials, I mean, uh, the USA Championship Half Marathon, yes. I sent him a text to Mary Wittenberg, uh, who is the CEO uh, of, New of the New York City, York yeah. Marathon. I said, this is the year. And I'm like, you know, I have, and then I have to go prove myself on the marathon in, uh, in London when I ran a personal best and then came back and won New York. So you can, you can see in yourself the training and things like that. You know, running is hard, but at the same time, it's something that you can see progress slowly but surely, and you got to have that confidence in you. And your kids are running. <laughs> yeah, my daughters are running. Uh, Jordanus and I, uh, Jordanus, my wife, tried to give them active, but they love to run. They love to be active in soccer and music, but, you know, the middle one has the passion, but the other two, they got the talent. And the other thing you do is I love the fact that you, you've always been a cross-training guy. I see you on the weekends and we're out of Fiesta Island. You're on the elliptigo doing, a, I think, a 26-mile elliptigo ride the week after running 26 miles and winning Boston. Yeah, I mean, I love doing the been fit. You know, sometimes the pounding is hard on the body, and I use elliptical for a long time, and I've climbed Mount Soledad with it, and, you know, not just about Fist Island, but all over the no, place yeah. to be able to just, uh, or to Mission Hill, for Mission Bay Park. It makes you work hard, and but no, pound, no pounding, so it's a greater way to, you know, supplement or also feel recovering from something to help you maintain that fitness. So you've done a number of, of runs with the rock and roll events where you're pacing other folks. Do you enjoy that? I love my fellow runners, you know, people say, do you want to get the urge to go? I'm like, no, as long as I have my, ra I don't have my racing flats, I'm not competing. I'm here for you, for the people that want to be able to be in the same corral with me or run with me. So, no, I, uh, I love it and uh, I can't get enough of it because, uh, you know, people have an appreciation. They want to tell about the Boston uh, races, that yes. they have, where they were, or sometimes I tell them stories to distract them from the mileage and uh, the time they're on their feet in the race. So, storytelling time, you know, for me and, and I, I love being with them. You've made a career out of changing perceptions, <laughs> right? Changing perception of a young boy from Eritrea making it to the Olympics, right? Changing perceptions of somebody older winning a marathon when people think that if you're over 33, 34, you can't do it. Also changing perceptions with brands. You had a brand like Skechers, which was not considered a running brand. And after you were dropped, uh, you connected with Skechers. And people thought, well, Skechers is a casual brand. But you changed that perception. And how exciting has that been for you to be able to work with a brand and they learn from you, you learn from them, and now they've been incredibly successful? No, it's always been a great partnership with Skechers to be able to give them feedback. And right. I tell them when I first uh, met with them, I, I have a personal best in me in the marathon and half marathon. If you're looking for the 5K, 10K, I'm not the guy for you. But right. they want the credibility. And credibility only going to be delivered when I'm the number one American marathoner on the top of the list. And that's what I tell them. And uh, it's so delightful to to deliver on that, but also their dialogue is huge to be able to give them feedback, put my input in it, and I feel a lot more prouder wearing the MED brand that was made by Skechers, and the, the fitness that, that I gave them to give them to be help, allow me to finish the highest possible was for the Olympic Games, or winning the Boston Marathon, or winning the trials. So ever since the sign up with Skechers, great things have happened in my marathon career. I'm so thankful for that. A lot of times it's hard while you're in the midst of it to look back at your career. Now you're sort of in that position where you can start to look back. Uh, do you look back and go, I did everything that I possibly could in this career? Almost definitely. I think running is something that you have to be in the moment for the most part, but then I'm right. great to be reflecting back, saying, you know what, I did it clean, I did it in a nice way. 
the, the best that I can with the talent that God given me, you know. Uh, who would ever thought as, as, from Eritrea, escaping poverty, running seventh grade P class that says, I want to get A and a t-shirt and <laughs> you know, to be able to be a Boston Marathon champion, New Jersey City Marathon champion, four-time Olympian and a silver medalist, you know, they all well exceeded my expectations. How about a round of applause for Mr. Meb Kaflesky, 2014 Boston Marathon champion. Again, this is Breakfast with Bob, Boston edition, presented and hosted by Highlands, Stop Your Cramp, Not Your Race, and by Polar, Chase Your Destiny. Hold on, everybody. We'll be right back. How about another round of applause for Mr. Meb Kaflesky as we go out? All right. Thanks.